I want to welcome all of the engineering. Oh, yeah, we got that, too. I want to welcome all of the engineering and ICS alum to the third annual uh, <clears throat> Hall of Fame celebration. And I want to welcome now, officially, the physical sciences alum to their first of our third annual uh, event. Uh, myself and Marios and Ken have been talking about this and uh, it's really great for us to do these venues together. It makes a lot of sense. Many of our uh, alum work at the same companies and the same institutions. It just makes a lot of sense for us to bring us all together. And um, from what you can tell, the community is responding. This is, this is great. We actually were a little worried that we're going to run out of seats. As you notice, some folk are standing <clears throat> back there. But we won't talk about that. Um, our guests tonight are composed of faculty, researchers, alumni, deans, council members, and several inductees from previous classes. Before we get started, uh, we, we made an, uh, a, an ex, a, a, a special point to get a number of our faculty and our administrators from the three schools uh, here today. So will all of our administrators in engineering, information and computer sciences and physical sciences, will all of our administrators please stand and be formally recognize all of our uh, university leadership. Come on, I know you're out there. Yeah, 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 please stand. So I'm going to now highlight uh, the previous inductees into the Hall of Fame. I'll start with engineering first, and then I'll move uh, to the ICS inductees. Uh, please hold applause uh, and, until I finish uh, at the end. Um, so for the past engineering inductees, uh, Cynthia Gittry. I didn't see Cynthia. Is she here? Oh, there she is. Hey. Patrick Hong. Stephen Palm, Eric Shen, I did see Eric, there he is, Joan Wada, hey Joan, the ICS inductees, Art Hitomi, who's Art, Marsha Hopwood, I didn't see, the, Pat Helen, is he here, Pat, oh there he is, Pat. Gregory Hopwood, where is he? All right, there he is. Tim Kashani. Richard Levine. <laughs> Paul, uh-oh, Micah Petrus. John Tycro. Is John here? <laughs> And Jennifer Wu Pascua. Jennifer? Look, it's, it's, it's incredibly important for us to start coming together as alum. And, um, and, and you say, well, well, you know, what's the big deal? Why, why would we do this? Um, it's done for two reasons. I contend to you, and I say this every year we meet, because every year is actually true, and it's more true today than it was a year ago, two years before that, and the like. The value of the UCI degree has never been more valuable than it is today. And I know that next year it's going to continue to go up. And why is that happening? Because this institution is now coming to its own, and it's coming to its own in a very, very aggressive way. Um, we, we're able to hire some of the most dynamic and accomplished faculty from all over the world. They will come here. And uh, we, we, we have a little secret. And the secret amongst us is we just invite them to interview in February. You come on out in February. Although this February, this last week was not a great week. But... Uh, 
but it's not just that. Uh, the environment here is a spectacular environment for research. The students are outstanding at both the undergraduate and graduate level. And in addition to that, uh, our faculty and our staff are professional, engaged, and it just provides for an environment for success. And we're seeing that when people come here and visit, when they talk to one another, when they, when they meet our other faculty and our staff, and they really get attracted. And this is a spectacular environment for us to invite you to be a part of as well. Getting you engaged, having you come back and engage with us, and, 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 and most importantly, having you support us really puts us in a position to take the university to the mantle where we think it should be. Look, every single UC, uh, you know, you started with Berkeley, and Berkeley uh, went through its time of prominence, and they are the, indeed the flagship. And then you've seen uh, UCA, UCLA rise to prominence, and then uh, Santa Barbara following that, and lately here it's been San Diego. And if you just follow that order of merit, it's just UCI's turn. Uh, we're in the right position, we have the right leadership, uh, we have the right individuals lined up to support us, and we're getting the right amount of input uh, and support into the institution. And so we know that this university, you can just see it every year, we're not taking small steps, we're taking big ones. And that's going to continue uh, well into the future. This is a, uh, just for those of you on the industry side, this is a, <laughs> We're not a startup anymore, but we're still rising like one. And speaking of uh, support and the like, we have something very special that just happened. We have several of our alumni here who have given a scholarship uh, to our schools, and those are all greatly appreciated. And in the most recent edition of this, uh, one of our previous Hall of Fame members fellow by the name of Nick Desai and his fellow classmates recently funded a scholarship to honor their close friend, Kevin Javier. He is the UC Irvine class of 1991. Yes, please. Um, he was a Bachelor of Science in Physics, actually. And Desai, these are engineers. Uh, unfortunately, on November 17th, uh, 2017, a tragic accident brought Calvin's life to a premature close. According to Nick, he loved UCI and reminisced about his time here often. Uh, <clears throat> he worked hard, he didn't care about being cool or what people thought about him or, or his harebrained ideas. Um, turns out, but by him not caring made him one of the coolest people you'll ever wanna know. And uh, those individuals have all come together uh, and with the generous donations, um, we're establishing the Kelvin Javier Memorial Scholarship in, in engineering, and that will play an active role in the future of, uh, in the future of identifying and matriculating uh, highly deserving and highly competent engineering students. Please. And I just want to say to Kelvin, you know he's listening to us, you made your classmates proud, and uh, zot, 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 big guy. And so I want to thank uh, Kelvin's family and his friends who are here in attendance today. Where, where are you? Please, please give them a round of applause. I want to thank particularly his mother, Agrippina Javier, and his brother, uh, Levi Javier, and his longtime friend, Benito, Perez, please thank you all for coming and enjoying this with us. Look, I, I, I started this off by telling you that our schools and our programs are doing extraordinarily well. And uh, in, in some sense, that's an understatement. Um, if I were to pull engineering out, and I know that both Ken and Mario also talked to you about their respective schools, uh, over the last few years, we've hired somewhere in the neighborhood of 32 faculty members. Um, uh, those faculty uh, 
60% of those faculty members were underrepresented minorities and women. And that's a big deal for us as we diversify our, our faculty. Um, and these faculty members are outstanding. We got the top material scientists from uh, Michigan, the top uh, water resource person from Minnesota, who is here with us today is Effie Fufala Georgiou. Effie, great thing about Effie, this year, Effie was uh, our most recent inductee into the National Academy of Engineering. 0.1% of engineering faculty get elected. This is the kind of people we're bringing here. We've also uh, recently hired uh, not just the very best not just the very best biomedical engineering at Davis, but arguably one of the top in the whole West Coast. And uh, he goes by the name of Kerry Athanasiu. Kerry, please. How, how significant is that? If you ever have to go into an emergency room and get treated for shock and you survive, it's because of his invention. It's in every emergency room in every hospital in the world. It's on every battlefield in the world. And he is here with us today as a faculty member. That's a really, really big deal. And everything just continues to increase at the school. Well, we're over 3,800 students now. That's the largest we've ever been. We're growing somewhere in the neighborhood of five to 8% uh, per year. Uh, our, uh, so our undergraduate students have in, are increasing, our graduate students are increasing, our research uh, is up now for the third consecutive year. Um, our young faculty, many of the young ones that we've hired, we, uh, they all compete uh, for national and international awards and the gold standard for our faculty is the National Science Foundation uh, Early Career Award, it's called the Career Award and if you win that, it's a big deal. Normally. Uh, we're happy if we can get one of our young faculty to win that award. This past year, four faculty in engineering won that award. That's a big deal. And of those, uh, interestingly enough, I said we've been, been diversifying our faculty. We had four faculty to win the award. All four of them are, are women, which is a real, really interesting outcome. Um, speaking of what we're doing in that space, uh, this year we hired our first woman associate dean in Effie Fufala, Georgia, who's our associate dean of research. Uh, we have our first woman department chair in civil and environmental engineering, Sunny Jong. Where's Sunny? Is she around here? Yes, yeah, Sunny here is with us as well. Um, I am just ecstatic about uh, the progress that we're making. And it's not just on our faculty ranks. I want to say a quick thing about the students, and then uh, I'll, I'll get off the stage here. Um, our students routinely take top honors at international competitions. And uh, those include recent top five finishes in the AIAA Design Bill Fly competition. Uh, we had a top five finish in Elon Musk uh, Hyperloop Pod Challenge, which uh, took place this past year. And uh, we, were, we were the highest ranked U.S. team coming out of that competition um, in the top five overall. Uh, I, you know, it's, uh, we're doing all of this. We're maintaining students who are diverse. Um, and we're doing it uh, with students who are leaving and impacting the country and impacting this region in ways in which I would not have, have, have imagined. A number of them, last year, eight students uh, started companies. Um, out of those eight uh, companies that started, I know that four of them have received significant funding, if not from the government, then from VC as well. And so these kinds of things continue to happen. And then finally, um, people are supporting us like never before. So last year we raised about $36 million in gifts uh, to the school and um, 
We had a few big ones in that, but we had more than 600 gifts to the school, which is another all-time high for us. And so I'm totally ecstatic about that. And those gifts have led to the establishment of a new building, and that new building will be shared by engineering, information and computer sciences, and physical sciences, and you know maybe one or two others. But those are the three right now. Um, that, in, that, that building is called the Interdisciplinary Science and Engineering Building. And you will all be invited to the grand opening, and we hope to see you there. And so all of these accomplishments and achievements have been uh, accomplished in a very, very difficult environment. You know, over the last four years, we still have, we've been coming out of this recession, but we're in it. And so to see us uh, accomplish what we've accomplished, I, I, I'm just ecstatic. And so now I would like to bring up Dean Ken Janda from the School of Physical Sciences uh, to talk a little bit about the great things happening in his program. Ken? Thank you, Greg. <clears throat> I also couldn't be more proud to be here tonight. What a great crowd. And I want to particularly thank Greg. We started our deanships about the same time. And I think the uh, cooperation between our schools was unprecedented. And uh, I'm just so delighted that we've joined up in several ways that, that Greg mentioned. So. Thanks to Greg, he's a great teammate, and Marios uh, Papa, De Papa Matthew is going to be an equally great teammate, but he's uh, relatively newer to the scene. So, uh, in a, as Greg mentioned, we're delighted not only to be part of this event, but we're joining up in this uh, new building endeavor, and the whole idea of this building is to break down silos, to have chemists working with biomedical engineers and mathematicians to personalize medicine to solve our environmental problems, and it's just a wonderful collaboration. We're, in terms of student base, we're a little smaller than engineering, so we brought in 665 freshmen this year, 110 graduate students, and 186 transfer students, six faculty members, that puts us up to 150 faculty members, uh, nine, I believe, are members of the National Academy. Uh, one thing I like to brag about, when I came here 25 years ago, every few years we would get a, one of our graduate students would win a Na National Science Foundation Graduate Research Fellowship. Now we have 30 at one time. So. <clears throat> So for those of you who don't intimately know the School of Physical Sciences, chemistry, Earth System Science, the first department in the world designed to bring an interdisciplinary group together to study climate change, uh, mathematics and physics and astronomy. And I just wanted to mention one thing about each department that makes me really proud. So one of our young chemistry faculty who won a career award, but he also won a two and a half million dollar more award, He's designing a water bottle that you take water from just about anywhere, put it in the sun, and the water will separate into pure water and dirty water, and then you can drink the pure water. So this, we hope, you know, if it comes to fruition, will bring fresh drinking water to billions of people. That's the kind of impact we love to have. Uh, in physics and astronomy, we just hired a young faculty member named, oh, by the way, that guy's name is Shane Ardo in chemistry. Physics and astronomy, we have a young faculty member who just joined us, has already won a career award. She's also already been awarded a NASA Habitable, Habitable Worlds Grant, and her field of research is going to be to figure out how many of those exoplanets have life on them. So if you detect oxygen, if you detect water, there's probably life. Uh, one thing we're really proud of our math department is they're leading, I think, the campus in outreach. They bring 100 math students from the Santa Ana Middle Schools to campus every Wednesday, along with their parents. And the kids study math, and the parents learn what it's like to be at a university, because one of the things that holds back 
uh, URM unrepresented, underrepresented minority students from going to the university is the parents often don't understand that the university is a safe place for their kids and they can still be good family members and uh, be there. And they don't understand that we're the number one upward mobility machine in the world, we believe. You know, New York Times rates us number one, so we must be number one. And uh, they, you know, a lot of families don't know if your family makes less than $85,000, the University of California is still free, just like it was in the good old days for just about everybody. <laughs> Did Eric and Isabella come? I did, they're supposed to be here. I don't see them. Anyway, we have our Earth System Science Department uh, was started by Ralph Cicerone, previous chancellor, and uh, it is the number one department for studying the world's climate. And uh, two of our faculty members are amongst the most highly cited. Unfortunately, the reason they're amongst the most highly cited scientists is they know how fast Greenland and Antarctica are melting, and so it's a little bit scary. And then, well, that's all four. So I've said something about all four departments. And uh, once again, thank you to Dean Greg Washington for including us in this event. We'll say a little bit more about that later. And now I'd like to call on Dean Marios to uh, say a few words about ICS. Ah, here he is. Thank you, Ken. Wow, what a crowd. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. I remember the event last year was my first event. I think the crowd was half as large, so things are getting better and better. Uh, the choice of the venue, by the way, is completely symbolic. It's absolutely symbolic. We, we, we have the, the schools taking off, just like the airplanes behind us on the tarmac, so this is by no means a coincidence. So it's very exciting to be here tonight. Let me give you my quick spiel about ICS, uh, Information, the School of Information and Computer Sciences. Uh, it's, my, it's the beginning of my 15th month here, and uh, it's, it continues to be as exciting as it was January 1st, 2017, when I started. Uh, the demand for our school uh, continues to be unprecedented. The number of applicants for our undergraduate program has gone up by 40% for fall 2018 compared to fall 2017. So we have approximately 12,000 applicants for 700 positions. So exactly, that's wow is the reaction, right? Uh, last year we had 850 freshmen and my colleagues keep asking me, well, was this by design? And not quiet, but there's only that many no's that you can send to highly, highly qualified applicants. Uh, I think it's fair to say that we have one of the most selective majors on, the, on campus. And this year in particular is going to be extremely competitive among the students who have applied for the undergraduate program. Uh, right now, if you ask me how many undergraduates we have, it's 3,300 undergraduates. Uh, our computer science major in particular has more than 2,000 students. It's one of the largest in the country, certainly one of the top 10 in the country in terms of size, maybe even one of the top five in the country. So huge numbers of very, very uh, highly qualified students. Uh, for the master's program, we had more than 3,500 applicants, almost 1,000 applicants for the various PhD programs in the school. We kicked off new professional programs and the demand for the professional programs is, ex is, 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 is as high as it could get. We have a master's degree in computer science, a professional master's degree in computer science, which is really meant to prepare students for industry. Uh, it's not a research degree, it's a professional preparation degree. This was the first year, fall of 2017, and we started with 100 students in the class. So demand is completely off scale. There's another professional master's program in human-computer interaction and design. This was the second year for that program. We had 30 students in that program. There's yet another one starting, hopefully, fall of 2018 in software engineering. There's yet another one starting fall of 2019, hopefully, in data science. Uh, so the demand is just uh, off scale. Okay, enough with the numbers. It's not only about numbers, obviously. Uh, it's really about quality, but you know, it's good to have some of the numbers in mind. The school has 14 fellows 
in, uh, for, in the Association for Computing Machinery, uh, which is really the premier professional association in computing. This year we welcomed uh, yet another member of our faculty to the National Academy of Engineering, Judy Olson. Judy, I don't think she's here with us tonight, but we should give her a round of applause because she was just inducted into the National Academy. A little bit about our research and what we do. I know it's a very, very self-centered statement to make, uh, but ICS is really sitting in the, in the center of the universe. Uh, certainly, <laughs> certainly in the center of the campus. Uh, I will just give you a short listing of all the things that our faculty are doing. Another one of our schools taking off. Uh, departments, I should say. Uh, we have three departments in the School of Information and Computer Science. It's a very rare and unusual combination. Obviously, there is a computer science department, but there's also a department of statistics and a department of informatics. And if you look at the faculty in all these three departments, you will be amazed at all the things that they do jointly with uh, other schools on campus and other departments. I will start going down a listing. Um, Physical sciences, Dean, uh, Dean Janda here, uh, we are working together with colleagues in Earth System Sciences to use data analysis, big data techniques to, to predict wildfires and, and study the impact on wildfires on the environment. Uh, School of Engineering, colleagues are working together with Effie Fufula who is sitting down there uh, on, on water, doing large scale data analytics on, on water resources, one of the most precious uh, 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 resources on the planet. Um, our colleagues in the statistics department are working very closely with the UCI Mind Institute, battling Alzheimer's disease. They're working closely with the cancer center, the comprehensive cancer, cancer center in the medical center uh, on clinical studies, design of clinical studies. Our colleagues in the department of informatics are wor working on health, informatic, uh, health informatics approaches uh, together with uh, colleagues in the nursing school. Our statisticians are working with the new and upcoming uh, School of Public Health. The list goes on and on. Uh, I think it's really exciting to see what's happening around the campus. And it's certainly very exciting to see how ICS is an enabler for many of the accomplishments uh, on, on, in, in our school. As I said, it's a, it's a great pleasure to be here. And it's really exciting to see all, all the alums come together. Let me switch gears a little bit. I am the one, by courtesy of being on the podium, who is going to start, uh, who is going to kick off the next uh, part of the event. Uh, and this will be the recognition of our Hall of Fame inductees this year. We have 11 outstanding alums this evening with us. These fellow ant eaters were nominated for their notable achievements by virtue of their technical expertise, professional achievements, Volunteer, volunteerism and leadership to the schools. Let me start with the ICS inductees. Here's the routine. I call your name. You come up the podium from the right side. You're sitting next to me while I read your accomplishments. Then we move to my left. We take a picture and we iterate. So that's, that's, it's computer science, right? There needs to be an iteration there, otherwise <laughs> something is broken, right? Something is not. Let's hope there is no fixed point there because we'll be iterating until, you know, next year. I oh, know, this is pretty esoteric. Uh, okay, let me, let me kick it off. Uh, Howard Gers, Bachelor of Science 1991. Howard, please come to the podium. <laughs> Howard's visual effects and animation has appeared, have appeared in over two dozen major motion pictures, including Star Wars, Pirates of the Caribbean, and the Harry Potter franchise. All right, uh, he began learning, learning software and computer graphics production techniques while working at Rhythm and Hughes Studios at Hollywood, followed by his tenure at George Lucas Industrial Light and Magic, fulfilling his dream as a young boy to work on Star Wars. You know, I had the same dream. <laughs> in addition to his work in the motion picture industry, Howard's personal artwork has been exhibited at the Museum of American Illustration in New York City and various art shows in San Francisco, as well as being, publishing, being published 
In leading illustration annuals like Expose One or Expose One, finest digital art in the known universe. These days, Howard resides in San Francisco, in the San Francisco Bay Area, uh, with his wife and three boys, teaching cutting edge curriculum in high school, including virtual reality, animation, digital visual effects, coding, and video game design. The high school is the Marine School of the Arts and Students at Academy of Art University. Ed and I were visiting uh, Howard last, uh, last fall, and it was really a very fascinating thing to see his lab and the accomplishments of the high school students. You couldn't tell they were high school students. Based on what you saw there, they were probably college students. He and his wife also inspire young minds at their uh, after-school enrichment and summer camp company, Enriching You. Howard, congratulations. We really need to get this right. <laughs> All right. Uh, next, Sivan Mahadevan, Bachelor of Science, 1985. Sivan. Sivan has over 25 years of financial market experience between his tenure at two leading investment banks in New York, Morgan Stanley and Solomon Brothers, specializing in corporate credit research and strategy, credit derivatives, structured credit, portfolio analysis, and risk management, among other areas. Sivan was a member of the technical staff at Bell Labs, so he did start as an engineer, a computer scientist, before joining the financial industry. Today, he's, current, he's managing director in Morgan Stanley's risk management department, <coughs> where he leads a team of 50 professionals. Previously, Sivan led credit strategy at Morgan Stanley, where he was the lead analyst on his team. He's well recognized in the industry for his research and strategy insights, and has been a highly ranked strategist in Institutional Investors Annual Fixed Income Research Survey for 12 years. Sivan has a unique background, including undergraduate and graduate education in computer science at the University of California and Columbia University, which we will excuse and omit for the moment. <laughs> These days, he resides with his wife and children in Tenafly, Tenafly, New Jersey, and is an active member of the Dwight Englewood School and Columbia University communities. Sivan, congratulations. Thank you. We can always sort of Photoshop these things afterwards, but you, you, you really want to get them right. Ah, next on the list is Sandy Smart Asburn, Bachelor of Science, 1987. Sandy. Sandy is uh, Vice President of Technology at AT&T where she leads a software delivery organization responsible for personalization and machine learning technologies and web-based OTT streaming. You have to explain to me what OTT is. Over the top, it's over the top streaming. She began her career at Hughes Aircraft Company as a software engineer responsible for designing, programming, and deploying rena relational database applications supporting the B2 radar systems. Sandy moved into several leadership roles at DirecTV, including Director of Middleware Development, Senior Director of Enterprise Integration and Offers, and Vice President of Development, where she was responsible for technical development and delivery of uh, their suite of IT applications. IT stands for Information Technology, that, that, I, that I know. <laughs> she has a Bachelor's of Science in Information and Computer Science from UC Irvine, Obviously, she's a very active alumna serving on the UCI Diversity Committee for ICS and Engineering and, the, and on the ICS Dean's Leadership Council. Sandy has been an active participant and advocate for the UCI ICS and Engineering Undergraduate Mentorship Program. Sandy, congratulations.
Now, this is a special part of, the, uh, of, the, of this award ceremony. It's a special treat. Our, 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 treat. our final inductee for ICS is the first inductee for the School of Physical Sciences. You will say, how can we do that? It's, 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 a, it's a person who has received two degrees. One from ICS, I would like to think that was the important degree. <laughs> Ken, Ken will disagree, obviously. Well, and math is the enabling language. Yeah, 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 I know, I know. <laughs> How else could it be, right? Uh, but please, join me in honoring our next awardee. Uh, in absentia, unfortunately, uh, our next awardee is traveling, but Ken and I will try to do our best to, to, to go and, and, and tell you everything about him. Uh, and you will understand why he, uh, Vince, Vince Teckler couldn't be with us today. So. I gave everyone the name. Uh, our joint awardee for the evening is Vincent Steckler. He received a Bachelor of Science in uh, Information and Computer Science and in Math back in 1980. Vince, as I said, is not with us today. He's a vast chief executive officer and one of its director. A vast software is the number one vector, uh, vendor of uh, software security, uh, of security software for personal computers. They have the number one market share in, the, uh, in, 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 in security software. Number two is Microsoft, just to give you things a little bit in reference. Uh, Avast was transformed under Vincent's uh, leadership from a sub-20 million regional company selling cyber security software for you know, people like you and me, you know, for, for PCs, to a 750 50 million full service global security company uh, providing next generation technologies that of course are based on machine learning to advance the mission of making the internet safe and accessible by protecting the world from cyber attacks. So Avast is going public in the London Stock Exchange literally as we're meeting today. Uh, it will be the largest uh, British technology IPO uh, the undertakers are uh, Morgan Stanley and UBS. Uh, the expected valuation will be $4 billion. This is all public information according to Reuters. Vince had a last minute engagement, so he had to fly back to Europe. After spending eight years as a vice president in Symantec, he joined Avast prior to Symantec. He was working for 20 years as uh, a software developer, system analyst and engineer, project management, a business development. Uh, let's give a round for Vince. He's not with us. You can see him up there. And uh, I will, without further ado, a nice, I will, segue. a nice segue into Dean Janda, who is going to continue with uh, the awardees, the inductees for the School of Physical Sciences. Ken, it's all yours. So <clears throat> I'd just like to join Dean Marios in saying what difficulty it is to identify for alums who are so outstanding that they differentiate themselves from all of our outstanding alums. What an honor it is to be dean of the School of Physical Sciences. So our second inductee for our school is uh, uh, Dr. Mikkel Middenbauer, who uh, is here. Uh, so, Mikkel uh, got a PhD in 1986 and an MS degree in physics in 1983. He's a co-founder, chief technical officer, and now CEO also? President. President <laughs> of Tri-Alpha Energy. So, Tri-Alpha Energy is in Mission Viejo? Lake Forest. Lake Forest. I should be pr more practice. But this is something I think that is pretty astounding. It is the largest privately funded fusion energy company in the world. So Michael promises me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, Michael was a PhD student with one of our early faculty members, Norman Rostocker, who invented some of the technology. He's carried on the, uh, the technical work as well as the management work. So not only does he raise hundreds of millions of dollars, but he has 40 patents. Yeah, so uh, he can do it all. And he's really given us the honor, he's the current leader of our school uh, leadership council, and he is helping us to design our strategic plan, uh, you know, what, 
what an honor to have someone like this to help us uh, do, you know, explain what we do to the rest of the world. So uh, once again, we're so delighted that you came to UC Irvine to study and that we're honored that we're still working together. We are, I'm likewise. Here. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be saying a few words later. So, what I, you want closer right here? Thank you. <laughs> Our second honoree is John Gerace. So John is another interdisciplinary guy, but the second school for him isn't here tonight. So we're just going to call him a 1987 graduate of the Department of Chemistry. Uh, John gives back to the school in many ways. He's been head of the Alumni Association. He founded our school leadership council, and we're deeply indebted for that. And he's also a UC Irvine trustee. So where did he get the experience to do all of that? So he's, found, he's a serial entrepreneur. Not General Mills, but... Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm the funny dean. He's currently president of Diasorn Molecular, a global diagnostic company focusing on detection of infectious diseases, oncology, and genetic disorders. It's an organization with over 200 employees between Orange County and Northern Italy. I can guess why you like to be in Northern Italy. Uh, previously, he founded uh, Calabri Biosciences, LLC. Uh, he was president and CEO of Freedom Meditech, and uh, as I said, he gives back really generously to UC Irvine in all these different ways, so we couldn't be more proud to have you on our team. Thank you. And unfortunately, our fourth inductee couldn't be here tonight, but accepting for him is Professor of Chemistry, V. Dong, who we're delighted to have recruited from the University of Toronto just a few years ago, one of my major accomplishments as dean. So uh, the inductee is David McMillan, PhD 1986 in organic chemistry, working with one of our National Academy members, Larry Overman. Uh, his honors and awards include the Ryoji Niori Prize, the Corde Morgan Medal. Uh, he's a member of the Royal Society. Uh, when I looked up his list of awards, it's like two pages, it's just amazing. So he's founder of the Macmillan Group, which strives for innovation in organic chemistry through the development of general catalytic concepts and their application to complex targets. He was born in Scotland, received his undergraduate degree in chemistry from Glasgow in 1990 before coming here for his PhD studies. So, and were you a postdoc? Uh, I was a graduate student. Graduate student at? At, uh, at Berkeley. Oh, at Berkeley, so it was before he moved to Princeton. Yeah, yeah okay. So, one of his great accomplishments <laughs> was giving us one of our best young faculty members, so. <laughs> Thank you for doing this for us. <clears throat> and so, Greg, the program is over to engineering. Greg? Oh, there he is. All right. So once again, not only uh, do I thank all of you for coming, for, inter for honoring these people while Greg is coming up, but these, these four people really are spectacular, and they are helping make all of our degrees worth more. So thank you so much. We have some pretty cool people, don't we? It's just outstanding, the kind of things that I'm seeing. And let me now turn 
to the engineering inductees. The first engineering inductee is Hani Haroon, MS 2000 Civil Engineering. And Hani? <laughs> Hani is Vice President and Client Account Manager for Jacobs, a Fortune 500 company that leads the global professional services sector delivering solutions for a more connected and sustainable world. He has demonstrated experience in the performance and delivery of significant railway, rail, aviation, ports, and transportation projects in Southern California with a constructed value exceeding $5 billion, completing projects for Caltrans, Sandag, the San Diego uh, County Regional Airport Authority. Henny has been involved in strategic programs such as the ASEE Diversity and Women in Civil Engineering Committee, and he co-chaired uh, the Cal Mentor San Diego and e Small Business Mentoring Program since 2007. Through this program, he has overseen the mentoring of seven small businesses. He's received a number of technical awards and has been involved in leadership positions in the ASCE and other professional groups in Southern California. His bachelor's degree is in civil engineering and um, his bachelor's degree is in civil engineering from the University of California, Berkeley and a master's of science in civil engineering from UC Irvine. He's a registered uh, civil engineer in the state of California. Outstanding, Hani. Next up is Cindy Miller, BS 1994, Civil Engineering. Cindy? Cindy is Vice President and Operation Manager of the Hazen and Sawyer's firm Irvine office with more than 22 years of experience in the planning, design, and construction of water and wastewater infrastructure and treatment projects. Her work has included project and program management for the Chinos, for the Chino Basin, uh, the, the Salter Authority, the City of Beverly Hills, Irvine Ranch Water District, Mojave Water Agency, and many other California agencies. She has broad background in leading water supply planning and design projects, including groundwater, surface water supply, conjunctive use, treatment, storage, and distribution, and in conducting feasibility and planning studies uh, and alternative analyses. She received her BS in civil engineering from UC Irvine, and she's also an active member of several industrial associations, including the AWWA, Water Reuse, and ASCE. Outstanding. Somebody has a cheering section. <clears throat> Next up, Robert Sanchez. Robert is the Senior Director of Product Development for Glaucos, where he is currently working on a new minimally invasive glaucoma surgery implant. We need to talk. <clears throat> he is a subject matter expert for risk analysis in human factors usability over 17 years of research in development in ophthalmology, focusing on glaucoma and retinal surgical therapies, and has been awarded 22 patents in the field. Robert is a former mechanical design adjunct faculty member in UCI San Willie School of Engineering, thank you. And <clears throat> his graduate work 
under Professor Dave Rankinsmeyer. Where's Dave? I just saw him earlier. Dave. Um, his graduate work under Professor Dave Rankinsmeyer in passive and active robotic positioning tractive systems for use by stroke survivors uh, for motor function therapy has led to an awarded patent and has been licensed by Halcoma and marketed by Armeo this spring. Ar Armeo Spring, right? Both his work in biomegatronics and extensive career in ophthalmology have utilized his skill linking existing technologies and novel ways to solve medical challenges. Robert earned a BS in mechanical engineering from Loyola Marymount and both his MS in fluid dynamics and PhD in biomechanics from UC Irvine. Congratulations. And then finally, Darush Vakshuri, BS, 1982, Electrical Engineering. He's not present, but one of our esteemed professors, I think, Sarush Sarushian, is he here? Ah, Sarush Sarushian will be receiving this award in his honor. Darush is founder, chairman, and CEO of Pendar Technologies. The company develops sophisticated uh, spectroscopic platforms such as resonance Raman and quantum cascade lasers for diverse markets. Prior to this, he was the founder and CEO of, a, of Ahura Scientific, a high-tech venture company that he grew to uh, more than 70 million in revenue. And uh, that company was acquired um, <clears throat> and he has uh, and, and, and such moved on. He moved from Iran to California with his brother uh, to attend the 12th grade while his parents stayed home during the ensuing revolution and war with Iraq. Daryush went on to receive a BS in electrical engineering with minors in physics and biology from UCI. Those academically and formatively socially, in those socially formative years launched him to pursue a PhD at Berkeley in electrical engineering majoring in quantum electronics with a minor in physics. Daryush and his wife, Julia Sims Holderness, live in Cambridge, Massachusetts with their two young children for the last 10 years, together with his brother, Karush. They manage the Vakshuri Scholarship Foundation for promising Zoroastrian youth. Please give Daryush a round of applause. Well, there you have it, our inductees for this year. Please give all of them a round of applause. Look. I think Ken Janda put it best when he said, this is why the value of our degree continues to increase, right? The more you do, the more that reflects on the institution. You know, I can... Uh, we like to say here that uh, with the work that was done here on the ozone layer, UCI saved the world once. If Bender Bauer is successful, we're going to save the world again, right? <clears throat> Isn't that right, Ken? <laughs> so I can't look at these things the same way after hearing the outcomes, after hearing the accolades of many of the individuals, right? Um, I actually have early stage glaucoma, and so I will be talking to you. <clears throat> you can't look at these things the same way. You, you just don't know the kinds of things that our uh, alumni and our faculty and our students are involved in and the outcomes that they have. And so um, I am incredibly proud today, and you all are incredibly proud too, right? Yes, yes. Okay, well, well, let's do a test. <laughs> let's do a test. 
there's always a call and response that we have as entities and people who are associated with UCI. And that call and response is the infamous Zot, Zot, Zot chant. Now actually it was one of, at one of these events the very first year we did this where I was schooled on the meaning of the Zot and how it was developed by individuals who were there. They actually were there when the whole thing happened and the university chose uh, the anteater and the Zot was developed. Um, I don't know why they chose Zot, Zot, Zot still. The Zot, is that the sound that the anteater makes when he's eating a fly? Or an ant, really? Zot. Okay. <laughs> I'm not getting close enough to listen. <clears throat> <laughs> it is what it is. I am too young to know, but it is what it is. So, what we will do, I will lead you in the Zot 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 chant. Now, I see it already. Not all of you know how to do the proper Zot. This is not a proper Zot. That is a wolf pack. You must curl your fingers back to form the snout. Yeah. Okay. So we hold up like this. And on the count of three, we give a loud and thunderous three zot chant. Are you ready? One, two, three. Zot, zot, zot. So, uh, first, let me introduce to you engineering's very own Robert Sanchez. Robert, please, please come up, and uh, right, we're going to have three, in, three speakers in succession. Robert will be first, followed by Michael Vandermeer, and then Sivan will be, will be last. So, Robert. Thank you for that introduction, Gregory. I couldn't have done it without you. Uh, so on behalf of the 2018 cohort, I'd like to convey what an honor it is to be nominated and accepted uh, to the Alumni Hall of Fame, and a thank you for that acceptance for, for all of us. Um, I, I'd just like to say that it's, it's extremely humbling, especially after watching that list of accomplishments that uh, all the inductees have, have done um, in their, their short lifetimes, right? They still have a long way to go. and. Hopefully we'll see great and glorious things from them as well to come. So this year's uh, cohort spans the following technologies, chemistry, clean fusion, cybersecurity, detection of infectious diseases, financial risk management, lasers, personalization, machine learning, surgical eye care, transportation, water resources, and visual effects and animation, all of which play an amazing role in our world today and tomorrow. The majority of us here today were undergraduates and a few of us were grad students. And what we share is our experiences here at UCI. Based on our cohort, I think it is fair to say that UCI is a place where amazing things happen and where amazing things will continue to happen. Where else could you grab a mile swim in the morning, sail in the afternoon and rock climb in the evening all while working on your degree, our research of choice, in the sunny blue Southern California sky. It's probably why Gregory has people come out in February for interviews, right? So to me, the phrase UCI is a positive one. It reminds me of home, it reminds me of family, and where I learned how to be an engineer, and the engineer I am today is because of UCI. Grad school is not easy. I'd have to say the master's degree was probably the toughest of them all, and I came close to bailing. So close that I had a job offer in hand from General Dynamics. That same week, I had the privilege of meeting Professor Rankinsmeyer, and we discussed joining his lab for my dissertation work. Little did I know that that discussion would set the pace and tone for the rest of my career. I turned down General Dynamics and I signed up with Professor Rankinsmeyer. And uh, I ended up with three advisors. 
Rankinsmeyer for the biomedical side, Bobro for the kinematics and dynamics, and Kramer for the neurology. And I brought the mechanical design to the table. Together, we developed exoskeletons for stroke rehabilitation. There's nothing more fulfilling than helping somebody who suffered such a large trauma to be able to improve their quality of life. It's a, it's a huge difference. It was awesome. Soon I was traveling to what was then the Rehabilitation Institute of Chicago uh, to set up versions of our equipment for our sister research group to run um, their own set of parallel studies using uh, the robotic setups that we had, we had designed and built. I was leading a group of four and we were running human studies with stroke survivors on site here at UCI. Our device ended up being patented and licensed. It has sold over 700 units and is in rehabilitation sites around the world. Professor Rankinsmeyer has ended up becoming one of the two lifelong mentors that I've had and I've had the privilege of, of being able to work with and I thank you for that. Overall, UCI, its professors, its students have provided me with the means to complete my dream of earning my PhD. If you remember earlier, I may have said that uh, UCI is a place where amazing things happen. And for me, it's a place where my dreams came true. I learned how to lead a research group here, how to break a problem down into solvable pieces, and how to construct those pieces into a viable solution. And I thank my professors and my teammates and my study group members for teaching me how to do that. I also met my wife here, my wife Amy. Her work study job was awesome. She was the lady you had to see if you had a guest and you needed a parking permit in Verano, and, or in Palo Verde. And if you can guess what came next, you would find that I was swinging by to get parking permits that I didn't need. It got to a point where her boss would come out and be like, uh, you don't need a permit right now, you wanna come back in about two hours. And uh, okay, I'd come back in two hours. And this went on for about two months until I finally got up enough courage to, to ask her to come sailing uh, here at, at, the, at the UCI sail base. And uh, as luck would have it, all of my buddies that were supposed to come with me all decided to bail. It was a type of mutiny, you could say. And so here we are, Amy and I, on a night sail in Newport Beach on a UCI boat. Long story short, that fall I asked her to marry me on the UCI dock. We have been married for 15 years this June. It was the true beginning of my future, intertwining my memories of my youth forever with UCI. And I thank you for that. Robert, you need to give us a gift. <laughs> we'll start there. <laughs> so thank you, Robert. I'd like to ask up Michael Bindebauer to say a few words on behalf of physical sciences. Good evening. Um, I fully share what um, Robert just said. It is an incredible honor and privilege um, to receive this um, wonderful award and be part of this really inspiring evening. And I think um, it is certainly true for all of us that UCI was a transformational place. Uh, obviously this evening will carry a lot of memory, but it is really the time we spent here and in the formative years of our careers learning from true exceptional people. Um, I was incredibly fortunate and perhaps my entire career is more linked with what came out of my experience at UC Irvine. Norma Rostocker was one of the star faculty in physics, uh, one of the sort of founders of plasma physics, for those who know the field. Um, any one of us um, learning the field had to suffer through a lot of things that he discovered. And yet the, next to that, he was an incredible human being, a, a visionary person, an incredible mentor, and just like what Robert said, um, it carried for me then a lifelong friendship beyond. Unfortunately, Norman passed away in 2014, right around Christmas. Uh, coming out of the work um, I did with him and others here at Irvine, uh, we began creating um, the private fusion company that today is called TA Technologies. We used to call it Trial for Energy. 
And it was the vision of the work that nucleated during my PhD days that then carried over in a company that we've today grown to about $550 million of investment. Uh, we have about 200 brilliant people from all over the world working here uh, in Orange County in a lab in Lake Forest. Uh, we do quite a work with the campus. In fact, over the 20 years, we founded a company in about 1998. We've had uh, an incredible run with support from the campus, from the research community, interactive collaborative work. Uh, we funded eight PhD students and hired all of them. Uh, about equally many masters and undergraduates. Uh, we're still sponsoring actively the Norman Rostocker Fellowship. Uh, it's currently held by uh, somebody doing brilliant work in uh, turbulence research in, uh, in physics and astronomy. Uh, we also um, were lucky enough to endow the Norman Rostocker um, Applied Faculty Chair in, in physics and astronomy. That's held now by one of Norman's first students at Irvine, uh, Professor Toshi Tajima, who was in its own right a brilliant scientist and an extremely visionary person. And we will continue to work with the campus over the years to come. Our research now has reached a stage of maturity where there is it, it not only very likely the next few years we get to the level where we can actually get net energy. I think within a five to ten year span we will demonstrate that on the machine we're drawing up right now. Our fifth generation machine is just running now in our lab. It started running last summer. And um, if everything goes well, by the end of this year, it should reach a, a, a sort of what I would call basic proof of science that allows us to scale within a factor of three, roughly, to burning the easiest to burn, terrestrially burnable fuel cycle. It's a hydrogen isotope cycle. And um, following that will hopefully allow us to set to go to net energy very soon. But what's more important is that in doing this, in working on visionary large-scale projects, there's a tremendous fallout of technology that then carries into adjacent fields. So last year we spun off a company in the life sciences, it's called TA Life Sciences. It's pursuing an incredibly promising um, oncology treatment called boron neutron capture therapy. And we're actually working with the campus, we're working with people in chemistry, in, uh, in the medical school, and in, in, the in the biological sciences on developing precursor work um, towards that. It involves using neutron beams and vector drugs so it's a very cross-disciplinary activity, and I feel incredibly happy and privileged that we can not only give back a little bit, but also be very interactive with the community here. And I think we couldn't have done what we've been doing and couldn't continue to do what we're doing without this tremendous support um, of UC Irvine. And so for that, I have to thank uh, a lot of you that are sitting here that I recognize that have been part of this journey. Uh, and I hope that many more um, of the students will, will be able to come work for us through internships and uh, through sponsorships. Um, and so to my fellow inductees today, I would like to say congratulations. And as Robert said, I'm deeply humbled to be part of such an illustrious and accomplished group of people. So thank you very much. Outstanding, outstanding. And then finally, thank you, Michael. Our final speaker uh, for tonight is ICS alumni, uh, Sivan Mahadevan. Uh, please come up, Sivan. Well, congratulations to all of the uh, all of the inductees tonight. It's uh, it's 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 a humbling experience. Certainly, it's a it's a, it's an honor as well. Thank you to to Gregory, to Ken, to Marios, to Ed, to Kristen uh, for all of the um, uh, preparations in this event as well. It's 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 really really a nice venue. I wanna I wanna thank my parents uh, who are here uh, tonight. My sister, my niece as well. Uh, it's it's an absolute thrill to be here in this very very beautiful venue. Um, so back in 1981, uh, I, like most college students, I was a teenager and I set foot on, on this campus, uh, but the campus was also a teenager, right? UCI was a very young institution in those days and, and, uh, and I think I have to thank my parents for having the vision to sort of uh, encourage me to attend to a school that was up and coming. Obviously we had a lot of bigger name schools in the LA area. Uh, but this was a university that had sort of a wonderful thing to offer and, 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 and we got tremendous amount of attention from our professors and things like that and it's really, really worked a lot over the years. When I think about what I learned at UCI, there's kind of two things that have stuck with me. One is the vision that this university had. 
uh, back then in the in the 80s, and and also just the the clear thinking, the the cool-headed way of approaching problems, et cetera, was another thing that that I definitely took with me um, um, along my journey. Um, we learned how to program in a language called Pascal, which is I don't think used anymore. But, uh, but it, was, it was pretty interesting. We learned how to program there. We learned how to think with a language called Lisp, which, uh, which, uh, which was pretty amazing. We used to call it, uh, <laughs> we used to call it the language of in infinite string of parentheses, I think. That was the way, we, uh, that, was the way that we actually referred to it. But, uh, but it was pretty amazing. And, and in those days, if you had an infinite loop, it actually cost you a lot because you only had a certain number of cycles on computers that you could use. So you had to be very careful when you program, definitely. Um, UCI had a very foundational approach to artificial intelligence in those days, and you know today AI is a big buzzword, and I think that foundational uh, work that we did in those days actually really helps you sort of think about how it can be applied, and it's applied in many, many fields today as well. Um, one of my strongest memories was with Professor Tim Standish, so the year was 1984, and uh, myself and one of my buddies, Anil Bajaj, decided to do a, a project with him in our senior year. And we walked, to in his, walked into his computer lab, and he had this kind of boxy, rectangular-shaped computer, a couple of them on his desk, uh, kind of a small screen on the top part, and this little thing on the right-hand side that you put your hand on, and it would move something on the screen. Um, it was called a Macintosh. Uh, and it was a very hard computer to get. It was the year that, um, that it was introduced, not easy to get. Uh, the late Steve Jobs had the vision to create it, but I would say Professor Tim Standish had the vision to actually use it at UCI, and it was amazing that the things, he had the foresight. To, to, he knew what was coming, and he had the foresight, and that was really, a, a, that really changed, obviously, personal computers, and he really had that foresight. So when I graduated in 85, I didn't wait very long. I got on an airplane, like the one behind us, uh, and I flew to New York City. Um, and I never came back uh, uh, to live. I, I've stayed, I've been there all along. Um, went to graduate school at a university that is 211 years older than UC Irvine. So it was a little bit intimidating. Um, but uh, but I, I, I met my advisor in the first week of school and uh, you know, I was joining a graduate program and he kind of sat down and he put a list of courses in front of me and he said, you need to take all these courses before we can even talk about PhD and all this kind of stuff. And I said, I looked at it and I said, I have already had all these courses in my undergraduate. And he was a little bit shocked and I said, look, you know, UC Irvine, we had to do all of this as an undergrad, right? And he said, okay, fine, you still need to take 30 credits, so take whatever you want. So, so fine, so I, so I ended up taking, so I ended up taking whatever I want and, and, uh, and that was kind of cool. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I ended up working, uh, graduating uh, with a master's working in the, in, in the computer science industry for a little bit, but then I, then I decided to kind of move into Wall Street. And my, um, my first job on Wall Street, my, my, um, my boss was a mathematician. Uh, and he said, look, in, in math, there's, there's two ways to prove something. Uh, you can prove something by deduction, or you can prove something by induction. And he said, Shivan, on Wall Street, there's a third way to prove something, and that is to prove it by intimidation. <laughs> So I said, okay, maybe I don't know if I'm getting into the right field here. But, uh, but I think the cool-headedness and the cool thinking that you get from a place like UCI certainly helped kind of get through all of that as well. And that was, uh, that was pretty amazing. Um, applying computer science to finance is something that I've been doing for a long time. And I think it, uh, uh, it didn't make a ton of sense back then uh, in, in, in the early 90s. But, but when I think about it today, a lot of what we do is really computer science. Artificial intelligence has come into, into the industry. Uh, big data, data science, machine learning, um, all of these things are critically important to the way the, the, the world's financial markets operate. And I think a lot of the thinking that we did uh, at UCI is, is, is very important. Now, living in New York, it's, it's actually easy to lose touch with, with, um, you know, with this university. I have to thank uh, Tim Kashani, who's here in the audience today, with, with his wife, Pamela. They, they have um, been uh, um, very humble hosts of UCI alumni events in, uh, you know, in, in New York City the last couple of years. And it's been a wonderful opportunity for for those of us over there to kind of reconnect with the university uh, uh, and meet with alumni. And there are a lot more alumni in New York from UCI than I actually had, had ever managed, uh, imagined uh, meeting. So that was actually wonderful. Uh, we've had some fun. Uh, I remember uh, last year, Marios and Ed and I went to, uh, on a rainy day like today, we went to a nice lunch uh, 
in a in a Manhattan neighborhood called Hell's Kitchen, which uh, which has some very nice quaint restaurants, and we went to a nice one of my favorite Italian restaurants, which which is um, a bit like out of the Godfather almost, right? It's a small Italian restaurant, and we enjoyed some some really good pasta and all of that as well, and we caught up, and that and that was great. Um, but uh, but when I think about uh, you know, all that UCI has offered in those days, you know, this was a, a foundational school, a school that really excelled in computer science in an age when it was still very young, a very young major. Uh, it's wonderful to hear that it's one of the largest computer science schools today, as Mario has, has mentioned. Uh, I'm very, very honored and humbled to be a part of, uh, um, uh, of this inductee class, uh, some of major accomplishments. I'm still not certain what I actually did to deserve this. Um, uh, maybe it was the bowl of linguine uh, bolognese at the Italian restaurant in Hell's Kitchen. That could have been it, but, but very, very honored and very thankful. Uh, and I want to congratulate everyone again, uh, and, uh, and best of luck to everyone. Thank you. So, C. Van, you said Hell's Kitchen, right? You know that's where all of the characters from the Marvel Universe hang out, right? <laughs> so, I want to thank everyone for coming. And, uh, but I'm not going to make this mistake twice. The night is actually not over. <laughs> we still have desserts. You can see them in the back. Uh, delicious, delicious cupcakes and even uh, nitrous ice cream, uh, which if you haven't experienced that, courtesy of our folk in chemistry, <clears throat> or creamistry, if you would call it, uh, <laughs> you're definitely gonna wanna try that. All of our staff, both ICS, engineering and physical sciences staff, well, all of you who were uh, a part of this event, please come forward. Where are you? All of my staff. Put the food down. Well, wave where you are. I want to make sure we recognize all of you. I want to thank you all for the work that you've done in putting this together. This is a beautiful venue. Um, we are excited to hold our next alumni event at the Griffith Observatory in LA. It's gonna be a fabulous venue uh, there as well, and that's gonna be on the 27th of August. And so uh, please uh, look out for that uh, information. It'll be coming uh, to you soon. And, and also uh, pay attention to any other uh, school events. Um, as we bring this part of the uh, function to a close. I want you all to please help yourself to uh, the tasty delectables in, in the rear. Be sure to get around and engage a number of the award winners. Um, as you can see, it's just an outstanding group. And I want to thank you all for coming, and uh, zot, zot, zot. <laughs>